I'll be reading Matthew 7, 24, 27. And it reads, These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life. Homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words, words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who built his house on solid rock. Rain poured down, the river flooded, a tornado hit, but nothing moved that house. It was fixed to the rock. But if you just use my words in Bible studies and don't work them into your life, you are like a stupid carpenter who built his house on the sandy beach. When a storm rolled in and the waves came up, it collapsed like a house of cards. I've read Matthew 7, verses 24 and 27. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen.
since they were required to attend during the first of the week. So I suspect there are about four or five hundred young people in the, in the chapel today. And they gave me permission to come. Originally, until we checked the date, I was on surprise with my granny, the gospel party. But of course, they had to sing in the chapel today. So a dream will come at some other point. I'm also happy to be here to join my family today. When I say my family, I'm talking about all of Wesley Chapel, United Methodist Church, but my family in particular, the McCutcheons. My wife is here. She raised her hand to me. The two of us, they are retired. She retired from Clemson University. I forgot this has been so long ago. Then she worked for Carolina, and now she's at Clapham, where she's chairing the volunteer part. So at some point, we will retire. And of course, I'm happy. Last night, I got a big surprise here at the hotel. I knew that my granddaughters from Richmond was at Duke yesterday for the football game with their parents, two Duke ball people. And about 9 o'clock, my wife went in the hotel hall. I said, what world is she doing up there? And lo and behold, Grace Marie and Emma Jean came walking in. And those were my two youngest of my four grandchildren among their parents. Now they are They're COVID children, so they're accustomed to worship service by Zoom, very much like Generation Z. Our theme on this home coming celebration, the big bad wolf. <laughs> the big bad wolf. I've been reading some children stories, some Hans of Havens and some other stories, and I reflected upon one of my favorites as a child, The Three Little Pigs. The Three Little Pigs tell us about Mother Pig who eventually said to her three young sons, it's time to get out of the house now. And they decided they would build their houses. And by, they decided they would live together. They, you know, three brothers. They couldn't get together and build one house to live in, each with a bedroom, but they wanted three separate houses. They built on a plot of land. The youngest brother built a straw house. That house was important to him because he could build it by noon. Put on his sun hat, relax, put his feet up, kick up, and have his joy juice before sundown. <laughs> and then the second brother, the middle child, decided to build a stick house, a wooden house. And of course, he worked a little hard, but he had a tremendous appreciation for music. And so by sundown, almost, he was kicking up, listening to the latest songs, and having a good time. The oldest brother built a brick house took him a while, and throughout him building this house, the young one would run over and say, you're still working? Every night in the middle, the brother would run over and say, you're still working? And he finally got it together. But the big bad wolf heard about their progress. And you know, the big bad wolf 
in our mind is the devil sometimes. Yes. I don't care how you get things in order. Satan is always lurking at your door. I don't care how old you get, the devil is always tempting you. Now some of you say, you know, the devil don't tempt me. You know why? Because the devil had me already. Church <laughs> said, amen. <laughs> but the big man, you have heard about that. So he went to the youngest house first. Now in all honesty, when we talk about small houses, we must realize that there are some cultures, including our ancestors, in particular in Western Africa, that many of their huts are built out of straw. But as I observe those houses when I visit several countries, they are built and they are twisted and they can sustain a lot of bad things. But he didn't build that kind. He used the cheapest and most inferior material he could find. He also used the cheapest labor he could find himself. Because he didn't want to work hard. So when the wolf came, he said, let me in. And he never fell said no. Not by my chinny chin chin. I'm not going to let you in the house. And so the wolf said, I'll huff, I'll puff, and I'll blow the house what? Down. And he did just that. But the young man, the young king, and the sister say he ran to the stick out with his brother. But the devil is never finished with him. Never. He went on to the second brother's house. He knocked and he said, let me in. And the brother who built the stick house said, no, you can't come in. And the big bad wolf said, I'm coming in. And the brother who built the stick house said, not by my chin chin chin. All right. And so he hugged, he puffed, and he blew the house down. And there were the two brothers running to the big brother's house. Come on, great job. That they had complained about the whole time about him Amen. working so hard. Amen. And so the big bad wolf went to the brick house. All right. Amen. Sometimes you can wear the devil out. Grab the dude. But he puffed, he puffed, and he was out of breath. And he couldn't do any more. Yeah. And so he said, I'm going to get in. So he decided to go through the chimney. But he did not realize that there was a pot of hot water <laughs> at the bottom of the chimney. <laughs> and so he started climbing down. And when he got to that hot water, he jumped up, not the door, and he ran out of the house. And he never came back. A solid foundation. Amen. The theme of our anniversary deals with a solid foundation. In life sometimes, we are building weak houses instead of solid houses. And many of our houses are crumbling all around us day by day. We've seen all the reports of these crumbling foundations. But I would suggest to you this morning, that there are spiritual houses from and falling down all around us. You see, we assume, as an old man serving young college students today, we grew up in a house, all of our houses have survived in them. Amen? Amen. Many of them, Bibles came from furniture stores where we bought furniture. But the Bible was there. Yeah. They had all kinds of pictures in the Bible. Yeah. Normally, the wrong portraits of the biblical character, but the biblical characters couldn't look the way they were looking, but we were taught that that was the way they looked. Mm. And many of our homes had prayer every now and then. 
After some time when we get a meal, we young children have to give a Bible verse. Now some of you would say Jesus wept over and over. And I know your parents have time to hear it, but at least was a Bible verse. And when we came to Wesley Chapel, Reverend Hooker, before we had our first education building, we all met in the sanctuary, large classes around the world. And at the end of class, everybody made a report that somebody had to speak. And our day would come and we would celebrate. Then we got into our school building, our education building. As youth and children, and some of you are looking at you, remember the dances we had in that school building? <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> building on a solid foundation. The point is that we were the center of the church. Yeah. And our pastors believed that not only were we the future, but we were the church of today. Amen. And what is so exciting about it, as I think about those early pastors that I remember, now some of you are older than I am, but I start with Reverend Urban D. Manning. Amen. And this man, yeah. this man was teaching yeah. our Sunday school, yeah. but she was also like the principal and superintendent of the district of And we got our hands, she could come, all of us. The first lady. And I thought about those pastors through the years. Reverend Melvin Flood built the next education building. And we can continue to study the word of Almighty God. Amen. Solid foundation. And this gets me to this get me to this particular point. When you have been built on a solid foundation. You have no idea where you would land in life. God called me to be a preacher. And I know all of you think that being a preacher is an easy job. But like old folks said, every day ain't that Sunday. It's on this church. And I've served. And I've served all over the place. I remember as a young person. Going to Bamber, South Carolina, Mount Palm. Not only was I preaching, but they wanted me to get in politics. So I ran against the mayor pro tem after being in Bamber less than a year. Sort of like Herschel Walker in Georgia. <laughs> Church statement. <laughs> is 
church is changed sometimes. A lot of our churches don't like any change. Amen? Amen. I'm not quiet. I remember going to my first church there in Up Part of State, New Golden Grove, Fairfield, and Bell. I drove from Atlanta because I was in seminary. I had a 71 Mustang. But original and black. Didn't have an air conditioner. I was right. I had an air conditioner. I guess I was so cool at that time. <laughs> but I drove up to the church. I got out with my boots on. You know, they made boots for us to do the seven. Even though we were going to run and change the world, and they made, made some of what I call high heel sneakers for men, boots with the heels was high. I got out that day and my bell bottom pants, and the people started looking at who in the world is that? It was. And I looked around, and one man said, This is at Fairfield, beautiful church there in Pickens County. I said, We're going to build a parcel. I said, Where? He said, To the left of the air, when you get a wife. I said, oh. Now, the church had a cemetery that wrapped around the church. The only member that lived out there, close to the church, was Miss Jamie. She was 97 years old at that time. And he said, you be Miss Jamie's baby. And I said, no, I wouldn't see relative babies to myself. But as they observed me, and they looked at me, and they realized that I was a chip different, from all the pastors they had, because they never had a pastor in that charge at that time, their youngest pastor was 48 or 49 years old throughout their history. And he had ever sent a 23 year old single man to pastor that church. The first thing the big bad wolf did in the church, they started tailing me around Greenville. I had classmates and friends there from Flatland. At the IR, which was a summer jazz club, one of the singers there was a platform graduate. So often I'd go and have dinner and other friends, and we'd listen to her sing, and we had cups of wine and all of the kind of things there on the table. But they took a Polaroid shot at me. Oh, great job. And so one of them said to me, I'm going to show this to the superintendent. I said, no, you give it to me, and I'll take it to the superintendent. Lion Bill, the preacher in the church. I said, what did they drink in biblical time? You saw a student with the Bible. I've been to the Holy Land. You drink more wine than you drink more. And I said, the word is, you drink quite a bit yourself. <laughs> The big bad wolf was huffing, puffing, about to blow the 23 year old, 3 year old pastor's house down. But did that bother me? I kept on going. And in the four years I served those three churches, they grew, they multiplied, they paid off bills, they did all kinds of things. And the man that was trying to block me, when I was leaving to go to Bamberg, he was the biggest one in the church crying and had the longest speech. You see, church, when you get afraid of the devil, the devil will, will get you every time. I'm not saying that I don't have any fear in my life, but I got God on my side. And God will never leave me, God will never for so on this church anniversary, Western Chapel Amen. is built on a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. There are times as children when you come to this church, it's amazing how parents trust us. Crossing Highway 52 from where I live, no light was there at that time. Several incidents had happened during that time, as some of you remember. But we came here every Sunday 
morning, yeah. almost for church school. Yeah. With about a dollar in our pocket. Yeah. And sometimes we had church on the first and third Sunday. So I remember. Yeah. We had two lots. A dollar for Sunday school and a dollar for church. Yeah. And we still got back home safe. Yeah. God allowed us to cross that dangerous highway. Yeah. Because we were not afraid. Because we knew that God was on our side. Yeah. Yeah. You got to go to church as we know. Yeah. In 2024, we'll make major shifts, so I told And yet, as I listened to them prepare, for the exit, for people to leave. I said to the presiding superintendent on a Zoom call, as they're telling us how we want to say goodbye to those who leave. I said, hold up, sir. This is Mr. Walter, the superintendent. I said, what about those of us who plan to stay? Oh, I'm not going in the place. See? My ancestors have been a part of this Methodist movement throughout the year. And ages, because I have the question of not going in place. But what about those of us who will stay? I said, instead of planning for the separation, you should be planning for us to stay together. Yeah. And then he said, well, former superintendent of the Pentagon, well, things are a little different now. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm still a member of the church. I said, what's different is we have such weak foundation, we have such a weak foundation. You see, when the foundation is built up, the church will stand and the people of God will not fall. The church is built on a solid foundation. We will stand. What's the chapel? You have nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. Amen. Now, many of our churches have been running out all of the young people. And I'm almost a young adult in some of our churches now. Yeah, I'm 17 years old. Because we're not related to the young adult. I'm still listening. I know it's your lunchtime. We're on Zoom and FaceTime and all that type of stuff. But you know, when you are old, and you're trying to embrace young people. You need to understand their journey and their struggles. I have young people come to me sometime, young men with a pocketbook on their shoulder. Sometimes they have nails of pain. I have a colleague next to me, a PhD. He may have them killed one day. And you know, that's a British skirt. I don't think there's any British blood in there. <laughs> I guess they have played the thing. Had a young lady come up one day, my soul was for the midweek service. She came in a two piece outfit, what I call stiletto heels. And one of the choir members came to me, run the fucking camera, and I said, get a room and cover up. I said, no, y'all aren't covering up any of God's children here. If that's what you want to sing it, let us sing in that. And not only that, they looked at her, but that child sung to the Lord. And so when she found God on the face, and so when the chapel of mamas, as I told them, that in 1920, but they're older than I am, where they would come in with what I call a traditional long dress up. Some of them had their head covered, and some of them as whatever they are. The point is, our chapel is growing yeah. because the doors are open to everybody. Yeah. We are chilling, are attempting to build a solid foundation. Thank you. 
with these words of challenge and of hope, we give you thanks and praise. May they enable us to lead lives 